This Baltimore Ravens preview edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast. It's brought to you by Circus Sports. Circus Sports is giving away $14 million this NFL season. Sign up in Vegas and play from anywhere. Get all the info over at circusports.com. We're also brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app to get last minute tickets at the lowest price guaranteed. Use promo code SGPN for $20 off. We're also brought to you by our Patreon. Score exclusive perks, content, and contests, including our NFL win totals contest. With a thousand dollar prize. Join today at sportsgamepodcast.com slash Patreon. Hey, this is Derek Stevens. I'm the owner of Circle Las Vegas. You're listening to FGPN. Let it ride. Welcome everyone to the Sports Gambling Podcast. I'm Sean stacking the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan. Real money Kramer. What's happening, Kram? Dog. Uh turtles. That's the Maryland's all about turtles, you know that? Oh, really? Yeah, they got they got the Maryland crest on the Ravens. The turtles. Not they're a slow animal, Sean. Slow animal. This slow, team steady, not gonna be a slow animal. Race. I don't think this team's gonna be a slow animal this year. Really? I think it, for those who you like, like you like Odell Beckham Jr. You like Rashad Bateman already dealing with an ankle injury. You like you already He's washed still, up Mark Andrews. Uh, I, I think you know for those who like when Sean and I disagree, we're I think we might disagree on this one. Yeah, I, I think you're uh, you know you've made fun of me with the performance vehicle references this off season. And I think we might be talking about another car that not only upgraded the transmission and the computer that runs everything, but also added a bunch of horsepower, bunch of speed, maybe put on some slick tires. <laughs> Are they a dome team? Um, that's interesting. Ferrari. Could could uh, they they have some Ferraris? Sean, did I not pound the table? Zay Flowers was going to be the most, the, the best receiver right away in the NFL. He was going to have the most productive rookie uh, season. I don't think his landing spot hurts my opinion. Mm. So yeah, uh, but I think it starts with last year. Unfortunately, yes, uh, a lot, lot, lot happened. Lot to get to. I mean, we also uh, some breaking news in the NFL. Shout out to, uh, you, as you know, right? We stand with running back. What so, Ezekiel Elliott signed oh. one year deal, supposedly up to six million dollars. I mean, if the New England Patriots are paying Zeke Elliott, if it actually works out to six million guaranteed, then these running backs have nothing to complain about because, <laughs> I, I mean, come on, are you kidding me? Well, he's, got, he's playing the offensive lineman card, get a little bump in salary. That is true. Yeah, hey, you know, I can. I got so some reps you, at center last year. If you want to <laughs> check my the, tape? The franchise tag includes his work as the uh, center there. Can't wait to see Bill Bell. Check draw up that uh <laughs> that flag. How, how did this oh man we got a Josh or uh someone who's good at Photoshop. Josh is good at Photoshop, but um depth chart. Can we add Zeke Elliott uh as backup center in New England? That would just be I don't know why. You Personally know, I would find that really Joe good. Judge always did like guys who are versatile. So did Bill Belichick. Maybe Bill O'Brien's the same way. Imagine that. You won't know if he's eligible or not. Brian, you know who's uh, eligible for our Patreon Pick'em contest? Well, uh, people who have signed up for mm. our Patreon uh, gave away some cash and mystery memorabilia on the way to the winners of last week's prize. We got a weekly Patreon pick. I'm going to be running it every week of the entire uh, calendar. Obviously, we're going to be ramping things up, bigger and better prizes for the NFL. We got our win totals contest, thousand dollars up for grabs there. Sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash Patreon and brand new spot. Sponsor game time. That's right. If you're like me, you like going to game. I, I I do really enjoy going to games. Couple games a year. The tailgating environment is epic. I've seen the Eagles a number of times out here in Los Angeles at the Las Vegas Raiders Stadium. I, I know Colby hates dome stadiums, but that Raiders Stadium in Vegas is really electric. You feel like you're in a futuristic Thunderdome. It was an awesome experience, uh, except for the Eagles getting their ass kicked. But 
What's awesome about game time is it's ideal for people like me waiting to the last second to get those uh, tickets. They have the um, again, last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. So if you can find a better ticket in that same row for a better price, they will give you 110% of the difference. That's insane. Uh, and it's not obviously sports. They also, um, they also have concerts, comedy, uh, tons of great reasons to fire up the old game time app. But again, looking at the uh, looking at those Eagles Rams ticket, I'm just chomping at the bit. And again, it's great for the last second. So download the game time app, create an account, use code SGPN for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code SGPN for twenty for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Ryan, yeah. Well, hold on. You just gave me a great idea. Yes. I feel like I gotta I gotta give away some tickets during draft day. Okay. Some game time tickets. All right. I like I'll, that. I'll figure out the details. Stay tuned. Draft day, Thursday, noon position. Yes. A lot going on here. We just got back from the fantasy football expo. A lot of fun there. And uh shout out to all the uh people came up, say what's up, uh taking taking some pictures. All the people that really were excited to see my actual Dan Jones ownership. Yes. That was, that was Ryan like, was <laughs> Ryan was uh really impressed showing off like hey, oh hey, right yeah, here. Picture of my kids, no nope. picture <laughs> of my Dan Jones exposure. Yeah, you don't you don't carry <laughs> the uh the fo- the wallet size photos of the kids anymore. No, it's all just no. the uh screenshots of your Daniel Jones yes, best ball yes. ownership. Uh, and then Dalvin Cook to the Jets. I don't know if we included that as well. It seemed like he was kind of circling there. To me, not really moving the needle what on the mean? Jets one way or the other. Oh, I disagree. Okay. It's this is the super team. Oh, all right. Yeah, that's not a good sign. Bad sign for the Jets getting Dalvin Cook. Yeah. I mean, I I I don't think it's a bad sign. I think it's a sign that Brees Hall drafting him in the first round. I think that was a bad fucking idea. Uh, not oh. ideal for my uh, Isra- Izzy uh, Abankanda. Maybe I won't have to actually learn how to pronounce his name now that they signed Dalvin Cook. We'll see, Ryan. A lot to uh, get to. But of course, we're here talking Baltimore Ravens, who were 10 yes. and 8 last year, 10 and 7 in the regular season. Uh, of course, as we know, Lamar opted out of the playoffs, mm. although claims he didn't. <laughs> Eight nine eight nine and one ATS win total was at nine and a half. Uh, win total came over. We were both on the over. Kramer was thirteen and four. I was twelve and five. DVOA uh, overall was seventh for them. Offensive twelfth, defensive seventh. Pythag wins underperformed a little bit. Eleven point four for the Pythag only got ten. I mean this this Ravens team. It just it just continues. I I feel like they're always. They always were a good, reliable team, and I don't know, man. I'm, I'm maybe I'm out on the Ravens. Two and six Ooh. against teams with the winning record. They're an interesting team, right? I th- just, that, just that's been, a nice nugget. They're just there was just so much drama with that Lamar Jackson contract. I can't help but think there, there's something going on here. I mean, it's not football though. It's what? done now. It's in the past, right? Don't we aren't we looking through the big windshield and not through the tiny rear view mirror? No, I'm looking forward because I think I think in the future we could have more Lamar Jackson Got injury it. issues. More Lamar Jackson oh, uh sickness issues. Lamar Jackson figuring out ways he not to gotten, get on the field. He has had a lot of COVID. Uh, objectively and, and Looking at the data, not a subjective statement, he's probably leading the league in COVID. Yes, dominating COVID. Uh <laughs> They they've done really well in the first three quarters of games. A uh, defense ranked number two in the NFL and EPA allowed, but in the fourth quarter and over overtime ranked last by a mile. Now, what does that mean? The advanced analytics would say, "Oh, hey, this is they their fourth quarter win probabilities. They 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 would have uh, they're 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 destined for greatness this year. Due for regression, right? Yeah, but I I think. I think there's just something off about this team. I think it's just gotten stale with Harbaugh, with Lamar Jackson. Now maybe Todd Monkin comes in See, and changes. That's the spice. Things. That's the spice. That's the hey, I'm here for the gangbang. Yeah. Hey, right? this threesome's vroom, gonna vroom. this threesome's <laughs> gonna spice things up and save our marriage. I don't know if that's true. Look at Todd Monkin. Look at the Monkin. What are we what are we saying? Look at Todd Monkin. New okay. OC. Bring the vertical passing offense. Four seasons as an offensive coordinator, 2016 through 2018, Tampa Bucks, Tampa Bay Bucks, and 2019 in Cleveland. 18th in the league, 18th in the league, 12th in the league, 22nd in the league in points. 
Are you high on Todd Monken, Ryan? Let's start there. Uh, how can you not be? I mean, how can you not be when you saw what he did with Stetson Bennett in in college? And yes, so the excitement. I didn't include the uh, Georgia time. The most recent time. I appreciate you going to the NFL, but yeah, I mean, I, I th- well, this is it, this is an NFL team preview from not. Mistaken. Oh, absolutely, but I, I think you can also you can also uh, hypothesis that a, someone might get better over time. <laughs> like why he is a little older 57, but the, that's the, a sweet, that's a sweet spot. But the, the yeah, he's, he's peak. I mean, like, like at the right while, time, like, but, but this is, this is what they needed to do. Right? Like the, the Harbaugh, if you want to go after him, say it's stale. Well, what did he do? He went the complete opposite direction. Greg Roman known for his, I guess, creative, creative approach to running the ball and not exactly looking to have a high paced offense. And so the excitement is around the pace. The excitement is around more opportunities for Lamar to sling the rock. So that, that becomes like one fork in the road. Do you believe Lamar could pass the ball more? Well, I think if you really distill it down, if Lamar has the ball in his hands more, that's more times he can make a play. And so, yeah, I don't know. Like when I look to last year, kind of to, to put a bow on it, right? You nailed all the stuff. Like the regression is because of how they blew games. Uh, the regression. I mean, they, you, you mentioned all of that stuff, like the eight and four start Lamar gets hurt. Uh, they, 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 sh- they, all, all four of those games were close losses. Yeah, they four were, losses, I think combined <laughs> eight points, which I'm, is insane. They were a top five offense when Lamar played last year in EPA and, and Lamar Jackson, uh, Last four years, 0. 0.722 winning percentage. Like he is just a guy who wins a bunch of games, uh, but I, is Lamar ja- is Lamar Jackson a small dog, Ryan? I think you're. I think where you're failing here is I think you're failing to look past his. Like you're failing to separate Lamar Jackson, the attorney, and representation for Lamar Jackson, and Lamar Jackson, the football player. Mm. Lamar but, Jackson, uh, the football to me, player. To me, this is not a this is not a new thing. This is not a oh hey, this is just a weird situation for the Ravens this year. We've seen it, it him showing. When was the last big game Lamar Jackson showed up for? I think fair point, but this we're not talking about big game. We're talking about regular season games. This is I'm not. I'm, we're not. We haven't gotten to the playoff piece. I guess yet. that's true. And and I think to look no, and, at and, and what this team could be, we have seen Lamar when he's been doubted, have a very, very, very like sincere focus on his craft. And with this new offense and this new high paced attack and, and candidly the best receiving core he's ever had. Uh, I know they're still, you know, they still have the running back uh, issues with JK Dobbins holding out randomly. Yeah, uh, but it's Gus like Edwards J- already JK heard. Dobbins has no leverage. Uh, Gus Edwards ah. is hurt. Who's the Who's the who's the uh, and of course draft day coming up uh, oh. this Thursday? Uh, New Pacific kicking off. Ryan, who is the who is the Ravens running back you're gonna fall in love with? Because y- well, it's you- Gus Edwards still. Because we don't. I don't. I, I I haven't dug dug too deep, but he he wasn't limping. Okay. And I don't think we've gotten so an update. Justice of what went Hill, wrong. Melvin Justice Gordon. Justice Hill's the small guy. He was getting some work in the Eagles game. You probably noticed him. Melvin Gordon is probably is the obvious one, right? It's a touchdown game. But yeah. what if? What if this is just a run and gun team? What if they're spreading them out? I mean, think about what 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 I think about some of the stuff that Georgia did last but, year. But, you could but, see this team doing that. But I think yeah. the difference is, Ryan, the run and gun stuff worked for Georgia. One, they played in a dome. Two, I think they had that defense to that you could go run and gun. Because if you had a quick three and out, you weren't putting a ton of pressure on this defense. A defense who has struggled uh, as of late, rushing the passer, eighth lowest in pressure rate. They've struggled uh, finding a replacement for Justin Houston and his nine and a half sacks. He's gone. Uh, Cornerback Pepe. Demarion Williams was carted off uh, pretty thin at cornerback. I'm just worried they might be. It's it's nice to try and go super fast, Ryan. But if you run out of gas, you hit that wall. I, I saw it, and I'm not saying Todd Monken is Chip Kelly. I'm not going to. Whoa, whoa! I, just because he's a guy who struggled like in the NFL thing. and succeeded at the highest level I like at the thing. college world, I'm not going to say. Maybe What's Todd Munkin. Hypothetically, if Todd Munkin was Chip Kelly, what you would see is, hey, pace of play, some scheming guys wide open, oh, no. uh, a situation where Nick Foles throws for seven passing touchdowns, oh, but no. then. 
you put your defense in really bad spots when you go three and out, when you don't give them a breather, when you don't give them the field position and the running game that you need to uh, help facilitate this Ravens defense. Yeah, I, I think. And I'm and kind, that's maybe why I'm, it's good they have. Maybe, a, maybe I'm coming off a bit of a hater, but again, yeah. Harbaugh, it, it's just a slight hate. I mean, the the floor is still pretty high with Harbaugh. He's he's not quite Mike Tomlin, but. F- 15 years, 147 and 95 straight you, up. You don't only re- one losing season there, 5 and 11 all the way back in 2015. You don't respect the preseason streak? Uh, uh that is pretty hilarious. Again, they just keep dominating straight up. Eagles did cover. You're welcome America. Uh even though I picked the Ravens, I wanted I wanted I wanted it was a classic uh, you know, just throwing off of uh, the juju there. They were bragging about it in the Ravens uh subreddit. Uh, quote 24 straight and the, this is the message. Fuck you, anyone who doesn't care. We're making history by having the best bottom of the roster in the NFL. And it may not mean anything come regular season, but right now, teams are still playing to win the game, even if it's meaningless. <laughs> what? Yeah. That's uh remember when Greg Schiano had his players uh play hard on the kneel down play? Yeah. That really pissed that everyone guy. off. Uh yeah, I mean, to me, it's just the you know the the tale of regression making a lot of we 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 should look at how the roster change but the tale of regression uh we we didn't really touch on the injuries last year too but they like if you focus in on some positional groups they had some real bad uh, cluster injury luck and so that generally again regression you see um I saw I I ripped a nugget out of uh I want to say this was probably Cleve TAs where basically again just a regression nugget but but the fact that they underperform by 2.2 wins uh, puts them in a historical bucket where essentially 11 of the 13 teams that have been in this bucket over since 2006 have then become overachievers the following year. Yeah. And the, the, when, when the regression is then also tied to the idea that essentially like they were still awesome with Lamar and when Lamar exited a stage, right? Because his agent suggested he should be m- Hurt or or I mean, maybe he was Lamar, hurt. Lamar had to miss time in a key game to take a shit. Like this guy just figures wow. out ways to miss games. And again, leads the league in COVID contractions. Uh, obviously, the positives for the Ravens are are pretty are 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 there, right? Justin Tucker. As much as well, I find him annoying, being a cocky a kicker, uh, the dude can nail some <laughs> field goals. Him making eye contact with the camera after he blasts like a a fifty two yarder. It's like a it's like a movie character. Uh, but it, offensive line looks pretty good. Well, ETR has them eighth uh, ranked. And again, like Harbaugh, you're gonna have good special teams. Pretty good in-game coach. It's just it feels like 2019. This was Lamar's year. Got the MVP. I felt like we haven't gotten any momentum in the Lamar John Harbaugh connection since then. That's what I'm. That's what I'm worried. Well, about. they love each other now. And Do they? It's the, Lamar, the football player, loves John Harbaugh, the coach. Lamar, the agent, doesn't doesn't like Harbaugh, the coach, or that that piece of shit, Eric DeCosta. Remember when they sat and wore those plaid suits together like assholes? Quarterback wasn't signed, and there there they are dressed like idiots. Yeah, I, I, pull up the let's pull up the let's pull up the the roster shift because so you you I, I think bring the, in the boat trip. Well, you bring in Nelson Aguilar, game changer. All right, but objectively, they said we need to improve our receivers, and they did. They did. Your Zay Flowers and Odell Beckham. I mean, last we saw Odell Beckham, he may get hurt. That's fair. Yeah. But last we saw him, he was helping the Rams win a Super Bowl. And I and I think that could be his last meaningful mm, like okay. action. Okay. No, and, and okay. certainly, I mean, the Ravens gave him nothing. Like they were signing Des Bryant, uh, flag football quarterback, uh, Des Bryant to their roster. They were they were uh. trotting out Deshaun Jackson. So do I think I uh, the Sean Jackson can still run. Is Odell Beckham Jr. better than them? Yeah. Am I am I optimistic on Zay Flowers as a pick? Yeah, I'm with you. I I think he's he's certainly uh, interesting. Oh, he's ra- Rock, getting rave reviews. Rock Yasin had a quiet preseason game, but again, it's early. Uh, Rock Yasin I think helps them a little bit at the cornerback position. But you know they, they lost Calais Campbell, who was a dog up front for that defensive line. Um, they lost Justin Houston, like I said, nine and a half sacks. They lost Marcus Peters. They lost Jason Pierre-Paul. I, I just think they had a really core group that might be 
Maybe they were old. old, and maybe part yeah. of the reason they were hurt, and uh, you know, maybe, maybe. Look, I, I, I get it, but what if? I mean, the defense also might not matter. I guess that's the other. Well, see, that's where I, I, I guess I disagree because the defense is what really collapsed them in these losses. They allowed an absurd uh, seven yards per play in the fourth quarter that, and overtime. You do understand why that is relatively fluky. To like, you shouldn't expect them to just turn into a completely different defense at the end of the game. I'm like, like, what is the thesis? Like, why, why are they turning in? Like, why are they turning into a pumpkin in the fourth quarter? I mean, I think the team itself doesn't have strong leadership. And I think you have trouble closing Ooh. games. Teams that are not really good, not mentally strong. Don't have a ton of great leadership, have trouble closing games. Well, let, yeah, let's see. I mean, it's year two for M Mike McDonald. So maybe we, we should give him a little of the same bump. We give some of the offensive guys when it goes into year two of their system. I'm with you. The big concern for me, I think is they the lost a lot of decent contributors, especially on that front side. They lost a lot of voices in the locker room. Yeah. Whether Players or not Campbell. they were good voices, that's a different story. Like what if those voices weren't a hundred percent aligned with Lamar? And it was more to to make sure Lamar had the locker room. Well Which I, lines up to your version of how Lamar is as a person. You do know? you like, think do you think where do you think the locker room stood on Lamar Jackson not putting a brace and going out in that Bengals game? I mean Damn! If I was a, if I was a Ravens fan, I would be fucking pissed. They should have won that game. I mean, the Bengals had, or sorry, the Ravens had a bunch of opportunities to beat the Bengals in the playoffs. Oh, I mean, you're if not for that, that Huntley, that, like that I'm gonna Huntley Drew. not submarining instead no. going over. You know what it was? Huntley was listening to Drew Brees tell his kids that you can do anything. You can do anything <laughs> you want. And he said, right. "I'm gonna do the Drew Brees." So, do you think they're where? How do you think Lamar stands in the locker room? You think everyone's just you think he's good? I think we as fans and outsiders overweight the contract drama. No, this is not a contract thing. This is a sitting out um, of the game thing. I don't think people. I think the people questioning if he was hurt or not were outside the building. Mm. And we had and, former and player Jeremy Roenick on, and he was certainly questioning that. So I think if a former player like Roenick saying that, I think some of the guys in the locker room said that. Rona was saying it in the in the sense of like generationally these guys are all soft, and I think I think older players that are in the media are saying it like like my dog Michael Vick, but I I don't I don't dog. know if Michael know Vick's if saying it, I think there's something to it. Maybe maybe, but I don't think his teammates are saying it. I think he has the respect of the locker. Room. I, I don't just, I, nah. I I have full confidence he has the respect. I mean I li again go watch. And one of the other things I would say is like this defense started to evolve with Roquan Smith. I mean, you're acting like they didn't pick up a massive, massive piece halfway. Oh there. no, like, he's good. A no, no, but I'm saying like that. The, you started to see the evolution. Kyle Hamilton in year two, a guy who did a, had a poor workout, fell in the draft, perfect Ravens pick. He's in year two. He's flashing all over the place in camp. So yeah, I'm excited. Is there a team you don't like in the AFC North, Ryan? Uh, <laughs> The Browns are, I guess, I'm the lowest. On. <laughs> we haven't spoken about the Bengals, and and maybe I'm saving some hate for for our Ooh. guy Justin Wood, uh, who day or who dat? Uh, who day? Who day? All right. Um, Let's take a look at the odds uh, real quick here. Win total sitting at ten and a half. Make playoffs minus one seventy five. Miss playoffs plus one fifty. Division plus two twenty. Conference eleven to one. Super Bowl twenty two. One and uh, hey, let's get into can the I, schedule. No, no, go ahead. Oh, okay. I, I can save it. <laughs> oh, listen to those noise! Circuit Sports, fourteen million dollars up for grabs. Circuit Survivor, circa millions. Sign up in Las Vegas. Play anywhere. I was talking to someone at the Fantasy Football Expo. Listener Greg, shout out to Greg. Oh, what's up, Greg? Big fan. Lives uh, lives close to Akron, Ohio. Good dude. He goes, all right, be real with me. We're off the air. Is Circa as good as it sounds? As good as you say? I wouldn't steer you wrong, Greg. I wouldn't call it the Mecca. Ask any one of the DJs in the chat, the Discord, producer Josh. All our contest winners, ask them if they didn't have an awesome time at Circa. They won't tell you otherwise. It really is. I mean, the screens alone, Derek, the chance to win a giant check, 
the excuse to go out to Las Vegas. August 24th to the 26th, we'll be there. Come out, say hi, watch the show, crack open a cold one, sign up for the contest. It doesn't get any better. Circusports.com. Kramer, uh, what was it you were looking to say? No, no, it, it's good. We'll talk about it later during the schedule. Uh, but I, so I do have a confession to make, though. Okay. I did. I was going through my uh, my inventory of bets, and I I, I found that I I forgot, but I had inve- I did did some early investing in the Ravens, both in the conference market and the division market. So. I, I was like, I don't want this to make me too optimistic, like skew myself, but I, I am invested in them. And the, the again, the, this was a mon- this was a t- Todd Monken bet that happened. And it was like, oh, okay. Free Lamar. I got into the free Lamar stuff. And honestly, like if you're, <laughs> if you it sounds like a phase you went through in college, yeah, yeah no, I was that, going through the free Lamar, I was going in the free Lamar stuff. But, and uh, you know, they, they, they have, I, I think the idea that they were running, everyone seems to agree. This is almost like the, the Kellen Moore thing and the Joe Lombardi where everyone uniformly, whether you're a, a, a progressive, like spreadsheet uh, guy, or you're a football <laughs> guy, like you agree that the San Diego offensive situation is going to be improved. I think the same thing is going on here. I think there's not one person that has suggested that this might be a bad thing, which I'm going to suggest it, Ryan. It might be a bad thing. Well, it it gives me jinx vibes, right? Like no one, it's a complete bomb. Everyone says, what if the running, I'll tell you honestly, and I haven't even, I'm surprised they've even gotten it. The fact that Lamar Jackson says he's going to run less terrifies me, (laughs) terrifies me. Jalen hurts says, Hey, I'm going to beat you with my arm, with my legs and with my mind. I'm a triple threat. He realizes how, how powerful it is having someone that can pick up those third downs, keep the offense out on the field, put pressure on that defense. If, if Lamar is actually going to stay true to his word and not run as much, I am not taking up Ravens over. And I think he might. I think I think his chip on his shoulder is See, is you're he's reading still, the tabloids. I think wh- what tabloids am I reading? They're talking. Do you think Lamar Jackson's going to run less? I think Lamar Jackson will have less designed runs because that's what Greg and Roman's that's offense. That's had. bad. Greg Roman built an have, offense that turned him no, into an MVP. True, but then then didn't really change the offense for years, and the league caught up, and now you're you're running an offense where you're going to create more space for him to go off and create plays. I'm feeling with good his about legs this take. Is that our design set, runs? I'm, I'm settling into this take. I, I like that. You have this take. Someone I'm going to be it. on the opposite side of this. Take. Someone needs it. And while I do think when Lamar misses a pass, it looks horrible. I think we're going to see him in a situation where he's going to be throwing to some wide open guys. If Bateman can stay healthy, he was a guy that was, was getting open. And creating separation. Zay Flowers is a guy that creates separation. Odell, uh, we'll see if he can still create separation. But he, what was his thing coming out of school? Elite, elite route runner. So, uh, look, and we didn't even mar- mention Mark Andrews, who I believe it, it may even uh, have Kelsey in that in that in the separation category at tight end. So, look, I, I understand. Yeah, also, hot take on that. I think it's going to oh, be wow, way go. more of a. I don't think, I think Mark Andrews is, will have a good season, but I don't think he will be a tight end one because I think Isaiah likely is going to be getting a lot of work. Oh, okay. So, I mean, the idea that they're running both those tight ends, I can get behind that. The, yeah, I, I don't think I, when I didn't include him on our top 10 list, it wasn't meant like this dude completely sucks. I just think they really kind of like take. Well, you look at the look at the targets inside the red zone. They really like Isaiah Likely, and he's going to have a, a a bigger role. And I think between Odell coming in, Rashad Bateman, and Zay Flowers, those are going to eat into the Andrews targets. I I agree with you, but I think there's going to be more targets too. So they they are creating opportunity again. They're going to be running a lot more plays. They were one of the slowest teams. They're good. They project to be one of the fastest teams. Now, whether or not they can adjust that way, I think for Andrews and likely and whoever else you like in the tight end room, maybe you like Charlie Kohler, I think is his name. 
it's it's all about the way they used. Oh, Charlie Kohler, huh? Stay tuned for that one. Oh no. Oh no. Maybe we won't completely disagree on this episode. <laughs> uh, Brock, look at the way that Brock Bowers, an elite tight end prospect, is being de- was being deployed by Georgia last year, and, and how critical he was to their offense, uh, scoring a number of touchdowns both through the air, seven and three rushing touchdowns. So maybe you know what Isaiah likely to score a rushing touchdown this year, now or Mark talking. Andrews to score a rushing touchdown this year. That that's certainly fun. Yeah, I, I mean, look, we're. I think the idea that you're I'm projecting an offense that's going to have more fun and one of the most fun quarterbacks we've ever seen in the league is operating it. I mean, it's it's going from Stetson Bennett to Lamar. Jack. I mean, it, can we at Lamar, least reflect Lamar, on that? What? The difference between Stetson Bennett and Lamar Jackson, who basically the same age, which is hilarious. <laughs> I think Lamar's a year older. Yeah, I mean Stetson Bennett was throwing open to wide open guys. I mean, it, I I don't think there's there was space. I think though. they're really tough space. to compare. He scrambled. Stetson Bennett could scramble in that offense. Okay, so I think you're. But I mean, if 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 the Ravens had the talent disparity and played in a dome like Georgia, you oh, could talk wow. me into it. Is are the Ravens a dome team? I mean, they should be. Yeah. For uh, this, this might be a dome. High powered this, offense. this might be a dome team here. All right, so I I I don't have much else to say other than I I think. I I don't think I ever got to the point, but uh, when they were having w- when Lamar was in there, they played the toughest schedule in the league as well during that stretch. So there's just so many reasons to to expect regression and and na- from a narrative perspective, from a stats perspective. Oh, they're going to regress. So let right. let's walk through the schedule, and Sean can uh, let's see if Sean can have them regress backwards or forward, uh, depending on which way you're looking at the graph. <laughs> Texans week one, ooh. Danger, Dan, tell tell me there's danger there, Sean. Then you got at Bengals, slow start for the Bengals, uh, kind of like the Ravens in that spot. Colts at home and at Browns for Week Four. Which, which game? Wh- where's the loss? Uh, we we kind of we. Oh, brushed, they could lose both division we, games. We brushed by it, but they have uh, they have a delightful net rest edge, um, especially when you look kind of more in the micro, uh, game by game, and. Look, I, I, you, I like that they get the Bengals early. You, you know they're going to start slow, Sean. You know the Bengals are going to start slow. They have at Cleveland, Baltimore at home. When we broke down this, or when we haven't broken them down yet, but when we're going to break down this team, I'm gonna, we're gonna talk about it because I think it's an absolute team that we could be looking at smash spot week three. Uh, smash. The Bengals, that is. But yeah, so I, I think, I think there's some, there's some winnable games here. Uh, obviously Anthony Richardson, um, he looked amazing in uh, that, that Alec Pierce drop was so annoying because if he doesn't drop it, we could all be talking about something different because Anthony Richardson is there. He's ready. Okay guys. He's going to be, yeah. So this is four and zero for me. All right. Um, I forget did Cleveland. I might've had Cleveland split actually. Let's go three and one. Okay. <sighs> I'm going to go two and two. Really? Yep. All right. Uh, back to back road spot, and again, the, look look at the Ravens. They get th- three of their divisional games in the first five weeks. All the road games, getting them out of the way early. That could that could work out nicely for them. At Steelers, so back to back, Cleveland Steeler uh, is is a tough little spot there. Titans then in London, oh. so that's what three straight road games. Losing you a got, home game there. Then you got. Uh, I do not believe they are losing. I think that's a Titans uh, home game, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Lions at home and at Cardinals. Again, they, there are some easy, like the, some of the easy games are very easy. And I think to your point, even if you want to challenge, they weren't great against winning teams. They, they have some teams that project to be losing teams. Two and two. At Pittsburgh, loss, and then they either lose to the Titans or the Lions. Not oh. taking the not taking the bye week after London's a mistake. Why? I, well, I thought you were shitting. I, I thought you were saying that if you take the buy, you're wrong. No, I've well, always said okay. taking you're, the buy is good. You, you like the buy. Uh I, yeah. I'm still. I'm not. I'm still not sure about that. But I definitely think it could lose. It could cause them to lose that game. But uh, you know what? I'll try to be. I'll try to be low on them, and I'll say two and two as well. Wow. I'll. I. I mean. That divisional road game, a weird travel spot, like you said. All right, next up, you got Seattle at home, Browns at home, Bengals at home on Thursday night football, and at Chargers on Sunday night. 
boy, what a what a turnaround! So yeah, I go two and two right back to four and zero. Oh. Mm. Baltimore, I mean the Ravens, there will be purple in the SoFi. It's basically four straight home games. Mini buy into the Chargers game. Bengals at home. I think they sweep the Bengals this year. I think they split with the Browns. Seahawks. Ah, let's see. Let's see what the hater has to say. So wait, you're going? You, what did you say? Four and zero. Four and zero. Wow. Nine and three. All right. So Seahawks, Browns, Bengals. That is a home Thursday night. Yeah, this is electric. Uh, I'll go two and two. All right. Um, and yeah, it is. Uh, it is a Titans. You know, home game. I, I, think, I, I just so you know, it is a Titans. Yeah, home game, so. I, I just double checked. Um, yeah, I, Seahawks probably a win. I think they lose one of those division games. I think at Chargers is actually a bad matchup for them. Okay. See, I have them dropping the Browns and the Steelers game to start the year. So I, all right, uh, bye week late. So good or bad, if the offense isn't working, this is going to suck for them. Rams coming off the bye at which again Stetson Bennett versus old coordinator, <laughs> uh, assuming Matt Stafford hasn't made it that far into the season. At Jags on Sunday Night Football, at Niners on Christmas Day, and Dolphins at home. Steelers at home week eighteen. Again, winnable, very winnable games here to me. Very, very winnable games. The Dolphins. That will be. I mean, is that a cold weather? Is that does that count as Miami going into cold weather? Baltimore. Oh, it's going to be cold there, yeah. yeah. So I I would say the only game here that I think uh, the Niners game, and I guess maybe I'll throw the Jags game in there just because it's a it's call it a look ahead spot, call it a weird road spot. But this is at least three. To me, this is at least three and two. Maybe with with options. Three four and two, and one. Ryan. You got them down to twelve and five. Give me two and three for the Baltimore Ravens. I think what? they. What? Where are the three losses, Sean? At Jaguars. I know you don't have to specifically say. No, I I think I think they win two of their three home games, and I think they lose the road games. That electric atmosphere in in Jag in Duval Sunday Night Football. Duval. Duval. I just the, Balto, uh, Lamar Jackson. The best thing he does is he runs the football. He puts pressure on the defense, eliminating <sighs> Lamar Jackson design runs or reducing them. And you know him being in his head of I have to be a passing quarterback. I just got paid. I don't need to run. I'm out on that version of Lamar Jackson. All right. So is twelve and five good enough? Good enough for what? My record prediction. I, I was considering going four and one there at the, at the end. Would that that would be thirteen oh, you, and four? You smashed the over. Right? Oh, okay. I'll sit sit at twelve and five then. So you got you got obviously you're on Baltimore over twelve and a half wins. What else do you like for this Ravens team? Uh, well, like, or sorry, over uh t- ten and a half is the win total. Yeah, I'll take the over. Uh, like. I'm certainly going to sprinkle them to win the division. Uh, what what's the current price? Uh, plus two twenty. Oh, okay, so the two fifty I have in my pocket still still a nice price plus two twenty. Uh, the Steelers and Ravens to finish top two. I don't know why this keeps happening to me. I'm staring at this shit and then it just disappears. Uh, Steelers Ravens uh, to finish top two is. Eight fifty. Hmm. Uh, that's a that's a little long shot to sprinkle, just in case Joe Burrow's leg continues to act up. So the the question I was going to ask you is conference versus number one seed. See the Ravens, much like the 49ers that we spoke about earlier today. Which so check out that preview with Katie Mox. We we both kind of. I mean, you don't like the Niners, but you did agree that the Niners one seed is better than Niners conference. Yeah. I think the same thing about the Baltimore Ravens. Well, yeah, Lamar Jackson. I mean, not winning in the playoffs. Sign me up for that. Yeah. So Lamar, and then th- there's also the conversation to be had. Do you like? Com- so conference was eleven to one. One seed is twelve to one. And uh, I guess do d- you put MVP in that same category? Lamar is uh, tw- what twenty to one? 
in the uh, 15 to one. So do you like Lamar MVP 15 to one, one seed 12 to one or conference 11 to one, the best uh, one seed. I will take that then. Okay. I see how I put my fate in your hands there. <laughs> you didn't even know you had that much power right there. Yeah. All right. So I couldn't find any JK Dobbins props, but I want to yeah, fade I the mean, fuck out of that guy. That's the annoying. That's the annoying thing right now is like a lot of the. Okay, so yeah, uh, I didn't think it would be up, but yeah, give me under Mark Andrews eight twenty five and a half receiving yards. Again, I. Oh no. What? You're fading Mark Andrews. Yeah. Okay. I'm out on him this year. Uh, I I don't hate. Obviously, unders are sharp, so very very well done, Sean. But I do worry that you know that he. I think there's. I think there's an opera. There's a very. He got eight forty. He's he's gone over this. The I'm, ceiling's higher this year because more plays. That's all. I'll say. I'm going back. To uh, well. Disagree with the plays. <sighs> uh, shout out to Underdog. They do have props for J.K. Dobbins. Ooh, okay. What's what's Eight JK seventy-five Dobbins? and a half rushing oh, yards, oh, oh. six and a half touchdowns. I mean, I'm definitely. I'm putting. When does he play? Like, how could you? How could you take it right, over so on J.K. Dobbins? Right on now? the Chargers episode, we threw out Herbert over two ten and a half. I'm gonna put that with J.K. Dobbins under eight seventy five and a half rushing yards. But yeah, I mean, you you cannot do. You, are you fading the touchdowns too, or is that just too too fluky? I I'm, I'll fade the yards. Eight seventy five and a half. Give me the under. Yeah, I'll also go under. I mean, eight seventy five and a half. You said. Yeah, eight seventy five and a half. Of course, uh, underdog promo code SGPN. Get that hundred percent deposit bonus. Yeah, I mean. Even I looked at Ravens fourth place. It's plus three fifty. That's not even spicy enough for me. I will say I got something for you. I'll go miss playoffs at plus one fifty though. Oh wow. Okay. So Sean hypothesized that the defense could be bad. And I hypothesized that the offense could be good and try to run a lot of plays. And if the defense is bad, they could be having to run like extra, extra a lot of plays. Ravens to score the most points is twenty to one. Mm. Sprinkle that for me too. Okay. Because I, I I I would double negative you and say I don't disagree that the defense could have a low My floor. thing is that the no, they, look they you you what do we say about defense? It always it regresses more or it, it more, more variance than offense. They were twenty eighth in twenty twenty one. They went up to like sixth or seventh last year. Guess what happens? They go to the middle and they're not. They're not quite as good because they don't have the depth and they've already suffered some injuries. So yeah, lots of points. That makes sense to me. Yeah. No, yeah. Other than that, like even the contrarian stuff, I don't want to be too spicy. Cause I do think they have a I do think they have a decent floor, but I think that's floor floors where they're gonna end up eight and nine. It's gonna be a a lot of like, oh man, they were in this game. A lot of, oh, Lamar struggling a little bit to figure out the offense. A lot of, oh, you know, the Monkin offense, you really want that high completion percentage. A lot of Lamar not picking up uh, first downs with his legs. Again, I think the offense is going to have trouble transitioning um, to this Todd Monkin offense. I don't think it's just going to be a plug and play uh, Lamar Jackson superstar. I think if they do get there, it's going to be late. I think they're going to get off to a slow start. So, yeah, give me the, give me the Baltimore Ravens coming in at eight and nine. Anything else you want to get to, Ryan? Before we talk about last NLCs? one, because this this one stood out to me. Again, I think they're going to throw a lot, and maybe they don't run as much. To your point, maybe that's not good for the team overall. But if this team is throwing all the time and they're running all the plays and the defense isn't very good, could Lamar Jackson lead the division in passing yards? Certainly, no. there there are there are there's a nice chunk of the uh, the simulations where that happens for me, and the fact that it's. Twelve to one. What? He's behind Kenny Pickett at ten to one. He's behind Deshaun Watson at three to one. Joe Burrow's minus two twenty five. This one made absolutely no sense to All me. Right. I, I even what is it? Twelve to 12 one. Twelve to one. Yeah. I, all right. I'll co-sign that uh, again. Joe Burrow's leg. We don't know. No, that one's <laughs> not bad at twelve to one. All right. Thank you. I got a not bad out of Sean. No, I in an I, episode we completely disagree. I I do agree. That's that's mispriced. That should be like five to one, if he, that. 
where should he sit I mean, in the pantheon? I don't. I don't think his price should be that. I mean, Watson. I like Kenny Pickett, and I'm high on Kenny Pickett. But to make that that crazy of a difference, yeah. And what about what? Like, why is why is Deshaun Watson ahead of him? <laughs> I mean, Deshaun Watson. What are we talking about? Have you watched this guy? <laughs> why I'm is not he touching the... Deshaun Watson? Oh, uh, all right. I mean, I get it. Lamar, the most yards he's ever passed for is 3,100. So it's, <laughs> but that's what old Lamar. That's the Lamar who ran uh. the ball a bunch and <laughs> they were good. Now they're going to be throwing the ball all the time and they're going to suck. Well, that, I mean, that you can still it's hit just that, that 12 to one. No, that's why I added it to my sheet. Ryan, time for everyone's favorite part of the program. Our MLDs, AKA most likely DGENs. Right, we've been doing the the show the entire time. Haven't mentioned that we are both wearing matching man in the box t shirts. Oh yes. <laughs> Make sure you check out CJ Sullivan. Show bottom line bombs. Wherever you get your podcasts. Love these shirts. He's literally in the box. He is in the box right now. He's bleeding through the box. Thankfully we're right up on these mics. For me, it was a simple handicap. Give me Charlie Kohler, the guy is out. He's coming from Iowa State. He was there 2018 to 2021. Literally every player on Iowa State and Iowa bet on games. I I think I was trying to keep track. It was like 20 plus people. Uh, this was the more recent one. Arlen Bruce, according to court documents, Bruce twice bet under total points in games he played, including once as a player in 2022. Uh, that was against Northwestern, a game where I won 33 to 13, in which the over under line was 37 and a half. Bruce scored a rushing touchdown and caught three passes in that game. So maybe we should allow players to bet where clearly they're still trying and not trying to win their bets. Well, and I think we may have found the origin, right? We know this, this stems back to the 2021 Iowa state team. And what happened? Uh, this this was uh, put out by the Associated Press on December seventh of that year, eleven twenty two p.m. on the East Coast. Well, Charlie Kohler, he's winning a trophy. He's winning the Williams Campbell Trophy on Tuesday night. Top top scholar athlete in college football, known as the Heisman, the academic Heisman. Hmm. You know what the academic Nerd! Heisman comes with? Twenty five thousand dollar cash prize. Oh. <laughs> Are you uh, kidding can me? Can I take that in credits? Bankroll builder. Not only that, he also won an eighteen thousand dollar prize. That was, I guess, it's a scholarship, uh, but uh, for a different, a, a different award. So, uh, lastly, what did what did he major in, Sean? Mechanical engineering. Oh, four well, point. Who, who better to help you build a parlay than a mechanical engineer? Average. I don't think he's going to get in trouble because he's making the bets. I think he's going to share his model with his teammates <laughs> and his model is known to give out 58% winners. <laughs> I, I mean, don't actually, I made that last part up. I don't want to, I don't want to lie about his record, but listen, mechanical engineering is the major you go into. If you're good at math and, and sciences, but you're not really sure what you want to do. Right. We didn't even talk about uh, Michael Orr uh, oh. of the, the uh, offensive lineman who played for the Ravens. Uh, who now it's coming out that he is the guy that they did the movie, the blind side of Sandra Bullock. Yeah. What's going on here? Last played in 2016 for the Carolina Panthers, but played a bunch of years uh, for the Ravens. And uh, you know, it was that inspiring story. Um, This white couple adopted him, and, you know, took him in, helped him. Uh, achieve success, yada yada. I, I actually never even saw the movie, but now it turns out he says they uh, never actually adopted him. And right after his 18th birthday, they signed something making uh, the the quote unquote uh, this couple, uh, you know, the conservators of his estate. So they got all his movie money, all those royalty money. Are you serious? God knows what else kind of money. Yeah, Is this some Britney Spears shit. Yeah, like how can you? How is that legal? How can that be legal? It's been what are we co- doing? Conservatorship is for when you're like criminally insane. You're at the end of your life. You've lost your kind of faculties. You're an 18 year old <laughs> kid who's an adult and a professional athlete. Maybe he I got drunk and shit himself one time. <laughs> don't hold that against him. Yeah, come on. He's a teen. We've all been there. Can, uh, can th- I, there's got to be more towards the uh, 
uh, towards us. I mean, we'll see what the story ends up. And a lot of people in the chat are, are saying his parents as a lock for uh, most likely DJ. Uh, Unfortunately, they're not officially with the organization. We do have some rules. There also was a uh, former uh, Baltimore Ravens cheerleader who I consider <laughs> uh, adding to the list. Uh, feel free to Google that one. Just uh, Baltimore cheerleaders uh, arrest. But uh, she's also not with the organization. Only current organization members. Yeah, they, they have to be suspendable, right? I, I badly wanted to find some dirt on Justin Tucker. Guy's too clean. He's going to be played by Ben Stiller. In his well, watch movie. when he starts falling off. It's going to be a hard fall. No one will see it coming because he's got the inside Iggy. You want to hear one more little bit of advice? Sure. If I'm correct about this model that mechanical engineering major Charlie Kohler ball built uh, while it's looking for a way to reinvest his twenty five thousand cash prize for winning the academic Heisman. Well, he has a sister that will be attending West Virginia and his younger brother attends Arkansas. So stay tuned for some suspensions uh, at, on the Arkansas campus in West Virginia for next, allegedly, if I'm correct, <laughs> stay tuned for that. Hey, uh, you're watching live youtube.com slash sports game on the podcast. We'll be back. Uh, for our third leg of the triple header, uh, talking Buffalo Bills with site editor Adam Pelletier, who we were hanging no. out with at the Fantasy Football Expo, and no. he was <laughs> talking massive amounts of shit about how we have to be so high on this uh, Bills team. So if you like, if you like debate, embracing debate, and Adam's half character <laughs> of uh, where he goes full character. heel pro wrestling. Uh, so as far as the picks, I'm eight and nine. Kramer's twelve and five. Kramer likes the over, the division, number one seed. J.K. Dobbins under rushing yards, most points twenty to one. Lamar most division passing yards twelve to one. That is my one positive. Lamar most passing yards twelve to one. Miss playoffs plus one fifty. J.K. Dobbins under eight seventy five and a half. Mark Andrews under eight twenty five and a half. Under. 10 and a half wins. Hey, get in that Patreon. Appreciate it. Do your part in the war against sports, uh, corporate gambling, sports gambling podcast.com slash Patreon. Of course, uh, come out and see us uh, for a uh, sign up weekend at the beautiful circus sports. Beautiful. And of course, game time, lowest tickets, last minute guaranteed. Thank you for participating in the sports gambling podcast for the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean second, the money green. He's Ryan. These turtles move fast. Kramer, let it ride.